Welcome in UFC Hall of Famer Rashad Evans and Rashad have a night UFC. I mean goodness gracious what a card that was. Let's start with the main event. The Nigerian nightmare puts Jorge Masvidal to sleep with a sensational right hand in the second round. Usman retains the welterweight title via knockout. Rashad your reaction is what? My gosh, wow. I mean, listen, Usman is my guy. He used to live in my house, man. And, and you know, I, I brought him up from a young, when, when he was just coming from the Olympic Training Center. And I'm just so, just, oh, just outdone just how amazing he's gone. His uh, progression has been completely amazing. And this fight was just, you know, just, just topping on the, you know, on the cake here. I mean, the way he started off this fight, using that jab, keeping the jab nice and long, almost like a jousting stick, making it so that it made it really hard for Masvidal to see the angles. And then once he got up to an angle, he was able to drop that big right hand. Before he made him fall with that right hand to end the fight, he caught him with it with a couple good times. And you can see there that jab was really extending Masvidal, so we couldn't see what was coming behind that jab right there. And it was just a very, very good shot by Kamara Usman, but it just shows his eyes and it shows his growth and it shows the confidence that he has as a champion. It's just out of control at this moment. Masvidal even admitted that he stunned him, that he surprised him. He wanted to wrestle. And it's Kamara Usman that lands a picture-perfect right hand. I mean, just absolute textbook, Rashad. And I'm sure you would agree. And he even says he is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter right now. You agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, the way he's just dismantling his opponents is just, you know, he's going for the perfection. And that's the thing about it. He just doesn't want to win. He doesn't want to be one of those champions who just gets the W any kind of way. He wants to make a statement. He wants to let everybody know who even wants a belt. This is what it's going to be. So he has guys beat before they get into the octagon. And that's what a champion's supposed to do. We remember, we remember watching Mike Tyson back in the day and how excited we got because we anticipated the fact that no matter who he was getting to the cage or the ring with, he was somebody who was getting knocked out. Now he you're starting to have that feeling with Usman. He's finding his rhythm, and more importantly, he's showing that he has the power to really put people out with one shot. Now, you could argue that most MMA fans wanted to see Jorge Masvidal pull off the upset here. Uh, did Kamaru Usman win some people over with this fight, with this finish, what he did on this night now going forward? Absolutely, because he went right into, you know, Masvidal's wheelhouse. You know, he didn't try to wrestle him right away. He went right into his wheelhouse. He kept it standing. There was going to be no excuses. There were going to be, he didn't hug me, none of that. He was going to give Masvidal the chance to fight and win the fight how he wanted to win the fight on the feet. And anybody else can say nothing about it because he stood there and he showed that he had a better striking and he showed that he had the better accuracy and he showed that he had a bigger power. Well, you know Kamaru Usman is a friend of the program. He's uh, He's been here on CBS Sports HQ breaking down fights for us uh, in the past. And uh, I'm happy for him because what a finish that was there in Jacksonville in front of 15,000 fans, which was incredible, the energy and the vibe. And, and one of the people that we saw in the crowd there, uh, Rashad, was Colby Covington. And he clearly wants to fight Usman again. They last fought in 2019 when Usman won via fifth round TKO at UFC 245. What do you think about this rematch? after seeing what Usman did to Masvidal. I think it makes the most sense, you know. I mean, what Usman's been able to do in this weight class is just, you know, really starting to separate him from the rest, everybody else. And now he's going to start lapping people by being that fighting people a second time. But listen, Kobe Covington is streaking, and he showed in his last fight with Tywin Woolley that he has put some things back on track. Now training at MMA Masters, he's starting to round out some skill set and trying to maybe close the gap on some of the things that we've seen in the Usman fight, some of those holes, and maybe it can be a little bit more competitive fight. But listen, this. This is the fight to make, and both of these guys are prime. And listen, there can be another blockbuster before the end of the summer because that fight didn't go too long. I can see another fight, hap fight happening in August. I love it. Kamaru Usman, stay hot, kid. Winner of 14 straight UFC events. I, I mean, what an incredible uh, knockout of Jorge Masvidal on this night. All right, let's move now to the co-main event. Jung Wei Lee putting her strawweight title on the line against former champ Rose Nama Yunus, and Thug Rose dropped her with a spectacular kick to the head. I mean, it was beautiful. Wei Lee wanted oh to continue. Uh, Rashad, what's your reaction to how that fight ended as Nama Yunus becomes the first woman to recapture a title at UFC? It was, it was just pure beauty. I mean, the way Rose 
was able to read what was going on. She was coming in with the jab, and then Whaley was figuring her out by going with the inside leg kick. And then when when Rose called on to what Whaley was doing, she knew that she was going to go for the inside leg kick. So she stepped like she was going to do the jab, and then Whaley anticipated that it was a jab, and then Rose went right up high with that high head kick and just caught Whaley just sleeping and not even recognizing what she did. Whaley was so caught off guard, she thought the referee jumped in. She had no idea what happened, what hit her, and afterwards, she finally got to see it and was like, okay, I know what happened, but those are one of those shots, man. It's the ones you don't see that put you out. Rashad, what does it say about Rose Damajunas, right? She loses the belt. She becomes the first woman in UFC history to recapture a championship. What does this say about her journey to get back to the top of the mountain and win the belt? Well, she's fighting MMA where MMA needs to be fought, which is in the mind. A lot of people watch the sport and they say, okay, it's a very physical thing. You know, you guys got to be so tough. But it's not so much of the physicality that's the toughest part. It's the mental part. It's when you go into those fights and you've got knocked out and you've had a lot of a lot of bad experiences in the octagon, but still go in there and do it again and still go in there and still believe you can win. When she got knocked out by Andrade, it took a lot out of her, but she mentally rebuilt herself and now she's so mentally strong. You hear her out there with those affirmations. She really believes those affirmations, and those affirmations give her so much power. When she's out there, she feels like she has no one to fear. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Mystic Shad saw this coming because he predicted uh, the underdog, Rose Nama Yunus, winning this one, and indeed she does, becoming the first woman in UFC history to recapture a championship. All right, in the first title fight of the night, Valentina Shevchenko defends her flyweight championship with a dominating win over Jessica Andrade. Shevchenko undefeated at flyweight. Her last loss was to Amanda Nunes at UFC 215 in 2017 for the Bantamweight title. Rashad, what's next for Shevchenko? Well, I mean, after this dominating performance, and what was so impressive about this performance was the fact that Shevchenko went into Andrade's wheelhouse and really showed that she can dominate truly everywhere. And just the way she did it was just a pure statement. But I think that statement was more or less a message to the champion, like, hey, look, you dominated your last opponent, I dominated my last opponent. Let's meet somewhere in the middle and let's make this happen. I mean, the truth of the matter is, I mean, the, the, the fights that they fought were so crazy close, and especially the last one, it could have went either way, and I would love to see those two battle again because that's what it's about. That's what the UFC has been able to capture everybody's attention. They bring the fights that people really want to see. What, what what would they fight that at? You think? If they think get this, if one, they get a third one, if they get a third, what 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 what, what, uh, what weight class are we fighting this at? I think it'd have to be at 135. I think Amanda Nunes would really have a hard time, you know, dropping down to 125 and still feeling strong. And Shevchenko used to be a 135 pounder, so this may give her a chance to put on a little bit of size and a little bit of strength and not worry about that weight cut. Because with uh, with Amanda Nunes holding two titles at 145 and 135, that weight cut to 125 could be the end of her weighing at 145 because there's way too much weight fluctuation. So I think 135 would be the weight class. It would be spectacular to see that because now that you see, I think, Valentina uh, really at the top of her game and of course Amanda Nunes is at the top of her game and now they clash for a third time that would certainly be incredible uh, that would be awesome to watch uh, looking forward to that if that plays out now the fight that preceded the Shevchenko Andrade fight was a middleweight bout between Chris Weidman and Uriah Hall Weidman suffered an absolutely gruesome injury snapping his leg while kicking Hall 17 seconds into the fight. Similar injury happened in 2013 when Weidman was on the other side of it. Anders Silva, uh, Anderson Silva snapped his leg, kicking Weidman. Silva was out for more than a year. And Rashad, unfortunately, you've witnessed an injury like this in person. Yeah, it, it's one of the most gruesome things that you, you would ever witness in your life. And, you know, the visual is one thing, but just the sound of, of that, that bone snapping is just something that just really just is unforgettable for a while and then you hear the agony and the scream uh, of the person and it's just just something very just unmistakable about it and you just your heart really goes out to you know uh, Chris Weidman and um, it, it's such a sad unfortunate thing you know I was really feeling Chris Weidman in this late stretch at 185 I felt as if like he had a lot of things going for him you know the things have finally settled down where he's living at in North Carolina and things are finally starting to get back with his body with his neck healing up and everything so so he was looking to kind of 
put himself in position to be that guy at 185 to maybe challenge Israel, knowing that there has been a game plan or I guess a blueprint with Jan Blachowicz showing that maybe wrestling could be the key to taking out the top prospect, Israel Adesanya. But I mean, with that injury that we've seen with that leg kick, I don't know if we ever see Chris Weidman again. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, as you know, Rashad, injuries like that are part of this business. We could only hope and pray Chris Weidman comes back stronger than ever. Uh, big picture here, Rashad. What's your biggest takeaway from UFC 261 in Jacksonville? Man, you know, for the longest time, it was a foregone conclusion that GSP was the best welterweight of all time. Now we have to rethink that. Now we have to really start to, you know, maybe start to really consider Kamaru Usman moving into that spot and, and just really, you know, showing a different dominance at welterweight that we haven't seen in a long time. I mean, listen, GSP did his thing and he fought the who's who. But, I mean, there's something different about the way that Kamaru Usman's championship reign is. I mean, the guys that he's fighting, and, and it's just like every single fight seems to be a blockbuster. It seems to be one of these fights that the fans want to see. And this is how you get remembered. This is how your, your, your legacy gets cemented by these fights where people say, oh, yeah, when Kamaru fought Masvidal, I remember where I was at. Kamaru Usman is starting to get that legacy. Certainly a signature moment on this night for Mr. Kamaru Usman, the Nigerian nightmare, and also a friend of the program. And, of course, Rashad Evans, always a friend of the program, the UFC Hall of Famer, breaking it down for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Rashad, appreciate the stuff. Great stuff, uh, as always, my friend. Thank you, Hakeem, man. Have a good one. Good stuff there from Rashad as uh, Kamaru Usman runs his win streak in UFC to 14 in a row. Man, that is eye-popping. Hey, for all things combat, check out Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. On the latest edition, you will get their reaction to what went down at a wild UFC 261. Watch the series on YouTube, listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Morning Combat, download and subscribe today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.